Minister, thank you so much for your time. I suppose this, this round table itself sets a very, very big agenda for South Africa. I, ideally, this is something that is a very key growth area for South Africa. How exactly do you plan to tackle it and what does this round table aim to achieve? Yes, uh, we are engaging on three aspects. Uh, the first is uh, encouraging the companies to continue to invest, particularly in the infrastructure. Secondly, to invest in the skills. And then thirdly, to also prepare for the investment conference, which has been called by the president on the 26th. The key elements, as we all know, we have, uh, as government, we have uh, issued a policy direction which is being consulted with the industry on the spectrum release. release. And uh, we have had very useful uh, engagement this morning and very positive engagement from the industry. All of them were constructive and uh, there seem to be more agency, uh, particularly for both the, the operators, current operators and those who want to enter this industry to expedite this policy direction while we're still dealing with legislation in Parliament, but everyone agrees we should move with speed. But what came out clearly was that while we're still investing in the uh, 4G advance, there is a need now to focus on the 5G networks, because next year the World Radio Congress will allocate spectrum for, five, uh, for 5G. So we think we're, we're agreeing that we should have uh, some forum or working group to consult with the industry and prepare as a, as, a, as, a, as a South Africa Inc. as a whole for speedy deployment of the 5Gs in 2020. So those are some of the very key and uh, positive from the industry because uh, I was quite impressed also that even the workers are saying uh, they want a keen interest. We have had a very positive uh, response on this open access wireless network as a mechanism to allow those who are not uh, participating in the industry to come in. Uh, in that uh, <coughs> down with young people like you, the young females, uh, the females, the disabled, and those operators who don't have uh, access to spectrum or licensed spectrum can have access and run their services. Uh, I was listening to the young people were saying they want to run their own networks in their areas. So, and this will be a biggest an enabler for them. Yeah. Uh, they seem to be quite keen in, in looking in how do we make this project bankable as soon as possible as an industry as a whole. So, but the, the big operators also welcomed the decision by the cabinet to release some spectrum to them to release some congestion and also encourage them to continue to invest. They're investing on the order of about 25 billion per annum. So they promise that they'll continue and scale up these investments. Uh, and and in governments the pledge then in that regard? So you have 25 billion plus minus coming through from those, <laughs> yes. from those as well. What's government's pledge or part in, in, in that? Our, our pledge is that we should release this spectrum as soon as possible because we are responsible. We are working with our regulator they are also there, we are cooperating now, the normal fighting. Uh, secondly, <laughs> secondly, we all agree that we should, uh, this rapid deployment policy, it will reduce the cost of deployment quite significantly. And uh, that we should continue to drive this policy uh, while we are putting in legislation, but uh, to create another forum for, uh, which we have already started at a national level, where companies, property owners, uh, municipalities can engage so that there is a speedy uh, deployment of uh, 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 the applications. There should be some standardization. And quite clearly now we're in the era of technology, we should put those things online yes. instead of going to municipality and wait for a tender box to get us a uh, the forms on how to apply. So those are the things which are being put in, in the conference at the moment. You speak about a speedy process. <clears throat> people will want timelines, people want deadlines, people want to hold you accountable. <laughs> Can you? Uh, I've had mixed messages while they say speed. Uh, some of the entrants were saying they need just more time to engage with the policy direction, but 
generally they say if you can finalize it so that once we issue a final draft regulation this year then ICASA can start the licensing period. Uh, it is good that we have been engaging ICASA since the cabinet gave us the approval in August and uh, helping them to prepare so that when they they, they start the, 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 the invitation to apply uh, processes, there is no much delays and there is no more fighting because the issues are clear. So in our view, it has become clear to me that we really have to project manage this. We should follow the policy direction. We should have this spectrum license as early as possible next year, if possible, uh, so that we, people can start planning. But what has come out too is this digital migration uh, challenge that we are eight years behind the planned program. We were supposed to migrate in 2010, we kept on postponing. So we will work very closely with the industry, is prepared to assist the Department of Communication and Government to expedite the process of digital migration because the sooner we release the spectrum, uh, we, our original plan was to release the spectrum by next year so that early next year, once the licensing is done, the companies can start planning uh, the building of their network mm. and by end of the year they can get the spectrum and start uh, using the spectrum. The stock for industry